Okay, so again, this Google Tools for the Math Classroom, the one-to-one -one classroom. And let me put my screen up, my slides. Okay, I am Carla Kuiper, and my contact information is displayed. I'm a Google for Education certified trainer, and so I'm really uh, glad to be able to come to you this afternoon to talk briefly about some really great um, tools that work extremely well, whether you're in the one-to-one -one environment with Chromebooks or just using Google Classroom in general. All right. Um, some of my favorite tools, just to get things kicked off, um, one of them would be Google Forms. So Google Forms, if you're not using Google Forms, I would strongly recommend that you work um, by going to or begin working with Google Forms just by getting started by going with to forms.google.com. Google Forms is extremely a flexible application, and it will allow you to do a number of different things. Google Forms will allow you to create quizzes that are self-grading. First, I'm just going to go to Google Forms, the front page, and show you where you can find templates, create new forms. So Google Forms, if you're not familiar with it, you can start off um, from scratch, but really I recommend, I strongly recommend that you start by using one of the templates from the template gallery if you're brand new to Google Forms. You're going to find that if you click on the template gallery, you'll find that there's a number of different forms that are basically pre-created for you. Um, blank quizzes, exit tickets, assessments, worksheets and course evaluation. So if you're just getting started on your journey towards becoming um, more uh, digital, using less paper, getting the students used to online assessments, you can start with Google Forms and the template gallery. And the blank quiz is actually a great place to begin. When you create a blank quiz, you can come in, change the title, create new questions, I want you to notice that Google Forms will allow you to create a variety of different questions, including multiple choice, check boxes, drop downs, linear scales. You can also create grids and then also short answers. So there's, it's a powerful app um, that's built into Google Apps for Education. And if you come over to the settings area of a Google uh, Form, you can change any form into a quiz and it will make that quiz self grading. So it's under the settings. And so once you've set up your questions, you can go in and turn on auto grading for Google Forms. And so it's a feature that they added last school year and it can be extremely useful if you're getting started uh, with Google Forms. To show you an example of what this could look like, Uh, you could begin by taking maybe just your exit ticket if you're trying to get started. Start with something that you're already doing and bring it into a Google form. And I'll show you what this looks like. So take something that you're doing, create a Google form, just some simple questions that normally students might complete in a paper pencil format, type them into a Google form. Uh, notice also that Google Forms does allow you to add things like videos and images. So you'll see where I've added a, a video at the bottom of this form. And then again, in your settings, you can go in and do things like turn it into a quiz and uh, assign point values. So you'll see when I select this question, I can set up an answer key and then also um, the uh, the reteaching as well on this um, this particular question. So again, that's forms.google.com. Make sure that you're doing things like using the templates if you're getting started. Um, don't worry about embedding videos right away if you're just getting started. Uh, just make sure that you're thinking about using Google Forms in a variety of different ways. Exit tickets are great, but you can also use Google Forms as a center 
You can send them to Google Classroom. And you can also use um, Google Forms if in a lab setting if students have the link. So to give students that link, you would come over to the Send button and provide students with that link. So any link that you have can be copied and pasted into Google Classroom for your students. Another option that you have to get started um, in the Google Classroom is Khan Academy. So Khan Academy is a tremendous resource. And if you haven't used Khan Academy lately, I would really urge you to do so because Khan Academy has added some features to the school year that are really designed to help you out as a teacher and to make it very easy for you to blend um, Khan Academy lessons and resources in with Google Classroom. One of the things that you can do as a teacher in Khan Academy, and that's khanacademy.org, and I'll also put that in the chat box. is that you can uh, sync your rosters in Google Classroom to Khan Academy. So you can add a new class when you're on your coaching dashboard, you log into Google, um, log into Khan Academy with your Google uh, account. And when you add a new class, something new for this school year that you'll see is that you can, you not only have the option to name a class and then add students manually, but you can now import your classes from Google Classroom. And so you can connect Khan Academy to a Google Classroom account. So that means that Khan Academy and Google Classroom are basically working together. So when you connect your Google Classroom account, you can go in and pick and select one of your classes. So once you set your Google Classrooms up and add your students, then you're ready to begin to add, um, select that class, and then you can add a subject. And you can see, um, you can select from Khan Academy's menu of all of the different subjects that they have. Um, I want to highlight that you can um, select the materials that go along with Eureka Math and Engage New York. And then hit Next. Once you've added those materials to your Google Classroom, you can do things like find exercises, videos, and articles, assign things to your students, or you can go directly to your class. Um, gives you the option to preview information before you assign it to your students just to make sure that it's what you want to assign to your students. And then once you, uh, you do that, then you can go ahead and you can assign it to your class once you determine that it's what you'd like your class to do. So I think this is a, a tremendous resource. And if you are using Google Classroom, why not go ahead and connect it to one of the many applications out there that will allow you to send those assignments right to your Google Classroom. Another tool for um, the math classroom that works well in a one-to-one -one environment is called Prodigy Math. And it's Prodigy Math, or pro, the prodigymathgame.com. It's a free resource, and I'll drop this into the chat box so that you can explore this link. All right, All right uh, let me see the link to the HyperDoc. Here it comes. All 
right? Um, so Prodigy Math is in there. And you can uh, create a free account. Um, you can set up your own account with the username and password, or you can log in with Google because Prodigy works with your Google account perfectly. <laughs> And then you can let Prodigy know if you want to create something new or if you want to enable a Google sign in for an account that you have that's pre existing. Then select your type of user. And if you have an account already, again, you can go back and you can log in with that account. So I'm going to just go ahead and log in with Google. All right. All right, once you're in, you'll be able to find a variety of different resources for your students. So you can um, get information about the devices, mm -hmm. check out the kind of data that you will um, be have access to, and also find out how to add students to your class as well. And you can even uh, preview what games and resources look like. So there's even a support area and resources as well. All right, so Prodigy Math is a free tool and um, it works really well because you can log in with your Google account. Okay, another tool that I want to share today um, from the Google Classroom is Edulastic. If you haven't tried edulastic.com, you will find that there's a variety of different activities and assessments and assignments that you can build. It's an incredibly powerful and flexible tool. So the website is edulastic.com. And you can log in with your Google account. So it works well in uh, the one-to-one -one environment with Google Apps. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account. And it will take you first to your dashboard, but usually I go from there right to my assessment library. And in the assessment library, you will be able to find a variety of grade levels, styles of assessments. You can also search the assessment library in Edulastic for activities, for questions. Um, Edulastic has a a vast um, database of resources that will help you put together formative assessments and activities for students. You can uh, go from kindergarten all the way up to and through grade 12. So like I said, it's a versatile and very flexible database. And let me let it run a search. All right. Right now I'm looking at all subjects, but here we go, I'll go back to math. If you're just getting started with Edulastic, it's a great idea to look at the assessments that are already created. And as you can see, if you're an Engage New York or Eureka teacher, there are some assessments that are here already. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, if you, you can preview any assessment activity, formative assessment, by clicking Preview. And if you determine that this is something that you want to use with your class, then you can go straight to the Assign button. And um, you can 
save that assessment and also to um, to use this with your classes. You can add um, the grade and the subject. And um, also uh, you can do things like determine whether or not you want the scores on or off. In Edulastic, I'm going to go back out of this assessment for just a moment and I'll show you under Manage Classes is where you can sync with your Google Classroom and that's how you determine which one of your Google Classrooms you're going to send a particular assessment to. Uh, when you sync with Google Classroom, Edulastic connects to Google Classroom and your Google Classroom account and it pulls up the rosters for your Google Classroom, allowing you to be able to give an assignment or an assessment to your class. So it's a very useful tool and it's free. All right, so I'll pause for a minute and just let you explore that particular tool. Another tool that is very useful in uh, the Google Classroom is called Equatio. And what Equatio does is that when you add Equatio to Google Chrome, it allows you to easily create math equations, formulas, and quizzes um, from uh, just, just by typing or you can handwrite. So if you add that extension to Google Chrome, it will allow you to also add equations through speech input as well. So for example, I've got a Google Doc open here. I'm going to go to my Equatio extension. And then you'll notice at the bottom you have the option to use one of the equation editors, handwriting recognition, or even speech input. So if I um, turn on speech input and then click the button to start recording, I need to allow my microphone to go live. And then I can say something like two plus two equals four. Uh, hit insert and then Equatio will add all that for, for you. Okay, so that's Equatio. I, one of the best things I think that you can do um, with in the Chromebook Classroom that works beautifully on the Chromebooks, you need to go to the Chrome Web Store to add Equatio to Google Docs. And again, that's handwriting recognition, uh, speech to text or speech to math, I should say. And then also you can use the equation editors. All right, um, another tool that I don't think um, we use often enough in the one-to-one -one classroom or in the uh, math classroom is Google Drawings. There's a wonderful website out there about teaching math with Google Drawings. And a number of concepts, the website comes from, the website resource comes from a Google certified trainer, Mr. Eric Kurtz. And he's got an entire Google Doc of different ways that you can use Google Drawings in the math classroom. And I'll place that link in the chat box as well. And as you can see, you can start with uh, concepts such as line of symmetry and go all the way through um, algebraic expressions and more. So Google Drawings um, makes for a great tool. 
And here's just, here's just an example of one activity that you can do with Google Drawings. Google Drawings um, can be accessed by going to your Google Drive, hitting the New button. You need to go to where you can access more tools in Google Drive, and then going to Google Drawings. Students can use Google Drawings not only to create their own manipulatives, but to illustrate problems. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can use Google Drawings. as well. So those are some of my some of my main favorite tools. And what I like to do now is to pull in and talk about some of the some of my favorite things that you can find on the Chrome Web Store um, that you can use in the math classroom. So if you go to the Chrome Web Store, some of the things that you can install on the Chromebooks, these are some um, apps and extensions that have been made available to the district. They are unblocked and you can use them. And so I'll pull a few of them up and just allow you to explore some of them or let you look at them. So you need to go to chrome.google.com forward slash web store. If you're not familiar with it. And the first one that I want you to look for in the Chrome Web Stores is I want you to find um, a resource called GeoGebra. And I'm not sure if I'm even saying that correctly. GeoGebra. We're still here on this one. All right, there it is. It's like it won't come up on mine, but I'm going to go ahead and Google it. Okay. I'm, I think I muted someone. I'll, uh, um, I'll mute you for a little bit and hopefully that'll, maybe that'll help a little bit. Okay, um, so you can go to it's geogebra.org or geogebra.org, and you can do things like um, graphs, functions, 3D math, and there is a Chrome extension. Okay, here it is um, in the Chrome Web Store. And so you can add the graphing calculator or the geometry app, or you may want to add all of the apps to your, um, to your Chrome browser. So you get um, a variety of different programs all in one, and this is a free resource. Another uh, app that I think you ought to take a look at in the Chrome Web Store is called Desmos. And it's a graphing calculator and it is unblocked for our district. You can add it to Chrome. And it's another graphing calculator. So as you can see, it's, um, it's just waiting to help your students learn to visualize a variety of different equation types. You can create an account and sign in to save um, illustrations, or you can just use it as a graphing calculator as well. All right, another one of my favorite math tools in the one-to-one -to -one classroom is one called Design Something. So this one has a, a STEM theme. So if you're um, in a STEM environment, it's kind of geared towards fifth through 12th grade. 
Let me make sure I add the 3D. So here it is, and um, it's a 3D designer. It's free. You can add it to the Chrome browser. It works beautifully on the Chromebooks, and it's a, a really fun 3D design tool for students. It's plug-in free, and it allows students to design, model, and also export their designs. All right, let me add just a few more and then I will I will stop and let you explore the, the HyperDoc. Another one more of my favorite um, tools to get on the Chrome Web Store is called Fraction Wall. This one is more for elementary and maybe middle school students. Okay, it's called Fraction Wall and here it is. And it allows students to um, explore equivalents in terms of fractions, decimals, and also percentages. And um, you can add it to the Chrome browser. So you select them, um, you can select different fraction walls. And you can even uh, click to create random walls. And so again, that one is called Fraction Wall. All right, so at this point, I'm going to stop and let you explore. Um, the link to the HyperDoc is in the chat box. And I'm going to put a question in the chat box as well. Do you all have a favorite math tool to share? Okay, so if you have a favorite math tool to share, um, go ahead and share that out with us or type it in the, uh, in the chat box. All right, I'm going to uh, throw in one more uh, tool in the, the chat box, and this is going to be the um, EBR Tech Integration Team Google Apps for Education resource list. And you'll find a lot more on this resource list than just math apps and extensions. You'll find um, a lot of different um, subjects covered. Oh, wait, here's one of my, another one of my favorite um, math tools. It's called Number Pieces. And it's available on the Chrome Web Store as well. So you'll find hyperlinks to many, many resources that you can check these out and see if there's something that you're not taking advantage of in your class that you could be. And you'll also um, maybe want to share this with other teachers as well. So I'm going to copy and paste this link. so that you can uh, share this out maybe at your next PLC or uh, your next school professional development as well. All right, so that's it for me. I'm going to hang around for a while if you have any questions or if you want to share a math tool. But um, if you have any questions about um, any of the materials presented today, if you have questions about one of the tools, if you're looking for something um, in addition to what you saw in today's brief informational webinar, feel free to contact me, reach out to me. My email is kkuiper11, and I'll put that slide up for you, 
at ebrschools.org. And I would welcome um, any questions that you have or um, welcome the opportunity to work with you to help you find an app or a resource that would work for your class.